this talk is about um, European politics and free software. Um, first of all, you all know that we voted on the European Parliament this year, and this led to the situation that all digital rights experts we had in the last term in the European Parliament left. Um, I mean, Axel Voss is still there, so but I wouldn't consider him as a digital expert, but still, I mean, most of the people left, and um, so we had the problem that we need to um, start to establish new contacts. Um, we already did it, and um, we are somehow um, successful with it, um, and we started to establish these new contacts already before the elections, um, and we started to do mailings to candidates, um, especially to successful candidates, and um, also we used our public money, public code, brochure which we just released in the beginning of this year um, in order to contact these um, um, maybe new MEPs and this is also ongoing thing, uh, ongoing thing so whenever you are in contact with an MEP who could be interesting or interested in free software please um, let us know um, that we can also get in contact with him or her and uh, talk about free software. So, um, so before the election, we started to contact these. After the election, um, we, we contacted uh, the, the new um, MEPs and um, we had, for example, a policy event in, the, uh, in September this year where the Vice President of the European Parliament attended. So um, this means we already have good contacts and um, it's, um, we see that uh, free software will play a role in the, uh, in the new European Parliament again. And also during this event in September, which we organized together with o OFE, um, we signed an uh, open letter. This open letter was signed by many free software organizations already, and we sent it to the new European Parliament as well as the, to the Commission. Um, the Commission is not already in, in, in place, but still we, we already sent it. And um, also in the last year, we had a hearing in the European Parliament with a talk about PMPC. We had another policy event, it uh, was for the pre foster and um, several one-to-one uh, -one meetings with decision makers and um, yeah so and now there's another point beside the European Parliament there is another very important institution that's the European Commission it's still not in place we know that um, it's very likely that Ursula von der Leyen will lead the new European Commission and um, she said in her um, uh, agenda speak for, for for the next term that she um, will um, yeah, talk about critical technology areas. So, I mean, still these are all more or less just buzzwords at the moment, but we see that there is a direction where they want to go. Also, she is saying that, um, I mean, in her first uh, 100 days, it's kind of ambitious, but still she will work on um, AI policy. We will hear, um, um, hear more about this um, from, from inside later on uh, during the day. Um, but we can see that um, the new commission, it's very likely that they will work on digital um, topics and this will be all around the buzzword digital sovereignty. And um, this is very important because also in Germany and France and other countries, um, this buzzword al already erases and um, nobody knows what it is at the moment. Um, for example, in Germany, we just uh, had a a study released by um, PricewaterhouseCoopers and um, they said it's about free software. What happened was that two weeks later Microsoft did a big event in Berlin um, to, to tackle this and to talk about their visions of um, digital sovereignty and this is very likely that we will go ahead with this discussion in the next um, years and we will um, fight, a, fight around this term. So, and uh, this is very important that we always, when we hear this word, stand up and raise our voice and say, this is free software. Uh, this is very, very important. So whenever you are uh, around in a discussion and this password erases, please raise your hand and say, digital sovereignty is only possible with free software. Um, also, there are a couple of topics we will um, discuss, uh, or which is very likely that we will discuss this in, in the next term. It's about router freedom. Um, Lucas will, Lucas over there, um, it's the next talk after me. He will explain us a bit more about this. We already heard from Matthias the Radio Lockdown Directive. Um, we will bring our topics in with public money, public code. And um, then also it's the transposition time of the safe code share or the copyright directive. Um, um, campaign. So, in all the member states, we are now going to discuss um, 
how it's then uh, implemented in the member states and as well uh, as we did for um, the European election or as we did with Freedom Vote in, in Switzerland, um, we will go ahead with election campaigns because um, the member states are in the council and the council is the third institution in the European Union which is important so um, it's not just about the European Parliament and the Commission but also about the member states who are going to vote in the council. So we have to bring our topics in all these three institutions and that's why we are working on, on all um, areas of this. Um, as Matthias also already mentioned in, in his um, um, talk, um, we had the copyright directive in the in the last year and there was a very, very important vote um, and we managed it to bring an exclusion into this directive for free and open source code sharing platforms. And with this exclusion we can go ahead and work on like every file which arises uh, in the European Union, we can go back and say, well, you remember the copyright directive, we had the exclusion for open source code sharing platforms because um, um, open source is very, very important for the for European economy and that's why we can always come back to this copyright directive and take this amendment or take this vote and say we have a majority in Europe to um, um, safeguard free software and that's very, very important that we had this vote and that we can use it again in every debate which is um, coming up that we can just say, hey, you remember copyright directive? Um, we had this, had this very, um, very important thing. And again, um, I mean, the most important thing for the next year will be this term. So it's like we had this um, discussions about the right to be forgotten or whatever. So you remember other debates where it's just about wording. So whenever we will talk about this term, please raise your hand and say, we can only have digital serenity with free software. And um, I mean, we will hear lots of bullshit in the next of the in the next year, what, whatever this could mean. But it's um, up to us to be there in every debate, in every lobby event, and to raise our hand and say, we need free software in order um, to have um, yeah, digital sovereignty, transparent systems, and um, and uh, own European economy um, driven by free and open source software. Well, and um, as well, as I said, <laughs> um, we, we have a public money, public code talk where, where we go on, on every level. We have a radio lockdown um, talk again. And so these are, these are special topics, but for me it was very important in, in this talk to just tell you we are talking about this password in the, in the next three or four years and you should be aware of this. <laughs>